So now we're going to dive into the world robotics industrial robots. So 2019 was marked by a couple of different things that we all know, and it was marked by trade tensions and, and a bit of a downturn. But in face of these, um, you know, these challenges, the robotics market was able to reach a record high of 2.7 million units operating in factories around the world. And this is the highest number ever recorded, and it marks a 12% increase year over year. And what's even more exciting, when we look at the operational stock of robots and the robots operating around the world, from 2014 to 2019, we had a combined annual growth rate of 13%. If we uh, uh, rank the main customers, uh, the, the locations by country, then we of course see China, which is just an incredibly large economy. So it's um, kind of obvious that they have high installations. And given the development of the past years, um, the manufacturing industry in China is um, using robots and, and scaling up uh, their automation, um, improving uh, their industry uh, on a large scale. And that's what we see in the annual installations here. We have 141.5 thousand units. And um, this is by far uh, the largest market in terms of countries. What we see here is, um, well, two things. First of all, um, the share is still rather small. We have um, 18,000 units compared to 355,000 units in 2019. Um, blue is the traditional industrial robot, red is the collaborative robot. So we have a share of under 5% of cobots. But what we also see is that um, the number increased by 11%. So while overall we have um, a rather contracting market, collaborative robots could uh, increase their sales volume. This market is still growing. And um, it is also, I would like to em emphasize that it is addressing a different um, audience than the traditional uh, industrial robot. Looking into the professional service robotic market, which are robots which uh, support experts in the everyday um, in providing services, and uh, this market is quite diverse. So we are um, talking about um, close collaboration of robots uh, with humans, for example, in medical market, but also in in applications where no one wants to enter, for example the cleaning of oil storages um, in petrol uh, industry. We are talking about climbing, uh, climbing robots, exoskeletons, underwater uh, robots. So the application field is really diverse. So we have to be proud of the role that robotics are playing in making lives better. And for sure, your examples were, were quite exciting um, and, and proving that that's the case in service robotics is coming to a, a very important time and with 20% of the companies being startups, that shows the potential of that industry. Due to COVID-19, we have a higher demand in having clean and hygienic environments. And for this purpose, more and more professional cleaning robots um, are deployed. And we, we expect a strong growth in this area. And in 2021, professional cleaning robot will become a top three application. So it's also an opportunity for modernization. So I think many companies were looking to modernize and to adopt robotics and to deploy robotics around their, their factories. And it could be that with all of the additional reasons that these companies will take this opportunity to, to um, accelerate those investments. So in many areas, there's much discussion of a V-shaped recovery as we pull towards the next slide. And in manufacturing, and in particular the robotics industry, we certainly are hoping for a V-shaped recovery. And, but we have to think about 2021 now, and we know that it's gonna take quite a bit. We don't know what these, it's far too early to tell what 2020 will be and, and where we will land um, with respect to robotic 
installations, but there's going to be catch-up effects. And these catch-up effects will likely take more than one year. Probably will not be will not happen in 2021, um, but it definitely will start. We know it will start to happen in 2021. The case for robotics is as strong as it ever was, if not stronger. It makes production more resilient. Um, it's getting a lot of attention in the government area, you know, with policy and investment. We know that we need around the globe very modern production, and that means the adoption of technology. So we know this recovery is coming. We hoping, we're hoping for a V. It could be something, some other style of shape, but we can also feel it, and there's lots of reason to be very, very optimistic that this recovery will be strong in 2021, but we know that it could take to 2022 or 2023 to actually be realized.